Welcome, pool fans. This is the Billiard Network. And my name is Rico Dix, commentating on this straight pool match between two masters of pool. We are playing at the European Straight Pool Championships 2022 in Lasko, Slovenia. And our two players at the table, which you may have guessed looking at the bottom left of your screen, is Nick Vandenberg, currently at the table. Is he going to take a attacking shot here? He is. Ooh, went for the one ball, missed the one ball. So first chance at the table for the second legend featured in this match, Ralph Suke, the Kaiser. Now Nick Vandenberg is actually making his tournament comeback at these European Championships. Qualified for the Dutch team and is allowed to play the straight pool discipline, which we're seeing here, and the ten ball discipline. So he's got two chances at glory. I think Suke will feature in all four disciplines in this European Championships. European Championships playing four disciplines straight pool. They always start the championships with this discipline. And then we're still going to play nine ball, ten ball, and eight ball. And the te national team event. So all players here in Slovenia for about ten days or minimum of ten days during the actual matches. Some arriving before to uh, have like a training camp. All right, playing straight pool. Perhaps a little bit of a forgotten discipline in uh, modern day pool, but it used to be considered the king's discipline. And um, if you won this one at any major tournament, uh, it would be um, well respected among your peers. And so, let me just give you a quick overview, should you not know how straight pool works, and you may be wondering, why is he shooting spots and stripes, why is he not shooting in rotation? Well, for those people that don't know, straight pool is a discipline where you can shoot any ball on the table, and any ball is worth one point. And in this particular game, we are racing to 100 points, so first player to make 100 balls gets the victory. Now it happens... And you get to the last ball on the table. The last ball on the table remains where it is. The cue ball remains where it is placed after making the 14th ball on the table. And then we re-rack the balls, the 14 balls, minus the front ball. So you would ideally like to position your cue ball and the 15th ball in such a way that you have an angle to make the 15th ball and to send your cue ball careering into the 14 ball rack and thus opening it up and being able to continue your run. So you could theoretically, and what happens fairly often, especially at these championships, run out a hundred balls without letting your opponent to the table. Uh -huh. It's all possible. So this is a really nice game to practice at home, since you can kind of give yourself you know, if you keep scoring a, a high run record, it's, it's a really nice way to practice on your own. Uh, whereas, you know, the rotation games, you, know, you can really rack and break them. And see how many run outs you can make, of course, but uh, straight pull high run is a, is a nice little personal goal that you can keep setting the bar higher and higher with. So, Ralph, going through this rack, pretty smoothly you will find that in straight pool hopefully you're not requested to shoot many long balls or you know go from the one to the two which may be at differing ends of the tables um, you'd like to keep things simple if you can and open the clusters that of course remain after the opening break shots not all 14 balls will uh, disperse and, and be placed on the table without any clusters so and it's a pretty good tactic to determine which ball you want to leave as the 15th ball that's how these players think and I think in Ralphie's case it's either going to be the red three and perhaps the yellow nine ball if that isn't actually in the rack in the racking area. 
So of course the 15th ball has to be left outside of the area where the balls are going to be racked back. Should it be in the area, then the 15th ball gets placed on the middle spot of the breaking line that we have here on the side closest to our view, halfway up the table, middle of the table. Right, so Ralph is going to leave the nine, so it's hard to see from here. They may have a, a line outlining the racking area, and so you can see perfectly if your ball is in the racking area or not. I think you used to not even be allowed to have a racking line. I think here they have it. I think I can see it just in between the blue two and the yellow nine. You can see a diagonal line. That should be the triangle area drawn on there. So Ralph is going to... What's Ralph going to do here? So this is most difficult situation so far. He still wants to leave the nine only because the two is in the racking area. I mean, he could choose to play the nine. And then his cue ball is going to run into the blue two and you never really know where it's going to end up. Can he make this two ball in both left and right top corner pockets? I'm not so sure. If he can make it in the top left, then it's a natural position with a little bit of right spin to leave, bring his cue ball back around about where it is now. That would be ideal to leave yourself a break shot like that. So look towards players leaving themselves break shots, exactly like the one Ralph is demonstrating right here. So Nick with a Chance for a first pot, missed his one ball, and Ralph in punishing form so far. Right, let's see what Ralph can do, if he can firstly make the ball and get his cue ball back into the open area of the table. Nice control break there. Right, so you can see that often in straight pool you don't have to hit the break ball really hard and try to open up all 15 balls because that would risk your accuracy it would scrutinize your technique more it uh, and um, you know you know that or these players know that a few balls will always come kind of popping out of the rack even if you hit it at medium pace especially at the angle that Ralph had which was like a perfect breaking angle so Ralph is continuing in this straight pool game it's called 14-1 Continuous, officially. A.K.A. Straight Pool. So Ralph now looking to probably play position onto the black eight. And open the rack further. I believe. The only thing being is that he would have loved to have a ball near the top left and right corner pocket so that no matter what happens if he breaks open this cluster of orange, yellow, two, three stripe balls, that he's not reliant on needing position on one of those balls. So it's called like a safety ball, so that you would always have position on a certain ball already. Now it's kind of unclear and there we go and sometimes you think oh I'm gonna really you know open up this cluster but actually what you saw happen there was I mean he hit it hard and only made two balls move really you know you would have expected a few ball, more balls to move and things to open up that's that's where a good prediction of how the balls are gonna roll is very important ah, shooting the blue 10 in the side nice now this is a good game for us all, same as 8-Ball, to think along and, and kind of see how, how is he going to clear up these clusters. I um, don't know if the brown 7, I don't think the brown 7 goes, I don't think any of that, of the balls in that cluster have a pocket. So he did create a nice breakable angle on this yellow one now, so he's looking now at the direction he wants his cue ball to career off of the yellow one making the yellow one in the side but this is kind of dangerous because hitting the right side of this cluster might take his cue ball in the top right corner pocket so he's looking to hit the green full on or a little bit to the left of the green no. 
I Nostradamus or what? I mean, he hit the six pretty good, but still hit it a tiny bit on the right side and then, you know, went in off the way I kind of sketched. All right, so Nick will be pretty happy that that mistake only, only made him go behind 20 to zero in a race to 100. So another long shot to start. Ball in hand miss. And that's the thing in straight pool, that six ball that he was playing, the one ball he missed earlier, they're like the most difficult shots, you know, full table length. Whereas if you would have been playing rotation games like nine ball, ten ball, then you gotta shoot those balls all day long. Not if you play better position, but sometimes you have to start with shots like that or correct yourself if, if you haven't played position that well. And so in straight pool, you kind of get out of potting stroke or out of out of dynamic potting stroke since you're usually only faced with like short medium distance pots right so Ralphie back at the table let's look at what we believe are his break shot options so the 15th ball he's gonna leave I think it could be the brown seven but the blue two would then have to be potted in the pocket nearest to us So he could do that. So you want to look at a break shot. So the 15th ball that you want to leave and also at a ball from which you would like to get to that break shot. So a 14th ball. So those are the two balls you'd like to kind of be able to spot out of the whatever's left on the table often. And of course ways to break open cluster as soon as you can. Same as when playing eight ball. Don't leave your problems till last when you have fewer balls to open them up with. Right, so he's not gonna leave the two, he's gonna leave brown seven, sorry the blue two as a break shot and get rid of the brown seven now. And the brown 15 as his penultimate, as his 14th ball. Okay, well, Ralph should be able to get position on this 15th break shot and keep himself at the table. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Mr. Suke's pocket billiard achievements. All right. Well, he's able to get position with a touch of right spin. And bring it back to the, his cue line now. Give himself a nice angle. All right, so we're going to speed up the bits where players are racking the balls or are thinking very long, just to you know to, to keep the videos as short as we can or just more action-packed. Ralph is going to go into this with a bit more speed because he doesn't want his cue ball to get stuck into that rack. Did this nine ball pop out and give him a little bit of a saving grace? Maybe not. Maybe that. Maybe the orange five is in the way. No, I think he can still make it. And thereafter, of course, he's got the red three as a as an automatic next shot. All right. So. All right, so quite a bit of work to do here. Sometimes you break open a rack and you, you know, you loosen up most balls. Here, most balls stayed right where they were racked. So now he needs to find a ball with which he can break out part of or all of the rack. Could be the brown seven into the left side pocket, but he would need to screw his cue ball back off of this three, about two balls width. Could go into the rack from here, because the red three is a safety ball, but I think he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, no shot on the red three. Now his angle on the, on the 15 that he shot wasn't sufficient that he could keep a lot of speed in his cue ball, because he was hitting the object ball very full to even make it so lost a lot of speed so had to create a lot of speed anyway needs to play safe 
And this, I would imagine, is a bank shot that Nick is not going to pass up. I mean, it's, a, it's an off-angle bank, but these pockets with new cloth are fairly acceptant of balls that are not perfectly potted. Okay, let's see what Nick comes up with here. He could still play safe, send cut the three on the left side. I think he is actually, he's not. Yeah. It's a pretty good shot. Would have loved to have left his cue ball stuck to the top rail so that Ralph can't hit the lower hemisphere of the cue ball because now, let's say Ralph could elevate his cue slightly, hit into one of the balls into the pack and draw his cue ball back. Therefore not giving a shot up or be able to hit a ball out of the rack and make his cue ball stop against the rack at the bottom south or the north end of the rack as we're looking. So not the most not the dif most difficult of safeties for Ralph here. Let me tell you a little bit about his achievements. So And this is, uh, I can tell you, it's not like from memory. Ralph Suke's achievements <laughs> from Wikipedia. Since 1985, he's won more than 250 tournament titles, including 41 German championships and 23 Euro Tour titles. That's unbelievable. He's the most decorated Euro Tour player ever. And we all have heard about and we know about that the Euro Tour kind of the longest consistent continental tour there is and um, and probably the most the hardest one to win and Ralph has won a mere 23 Euro Tour titles all throughout Europe he's also won in the European Championships that he's playing in right now and still eager to win more titles he's already won 20 titles yeah. now perhaps even more important Ralph is a two-time world champion winning the world eight ball championships in 2008 and he managed to win the WPA world nine ball championships in 1996 so a while ago already but uh, still a danger in any tournament first significant title that Ralph won in Germany was at the age of 14 and he started playing at the age of six in his parents bar and so that was a good way to start so an extremely decorated player member of the BCA Hall of Fame where all of the most legendary pool players are decorated with Hall of Fame membership he's one of a select few So, he's at the table with a bit of work to do still, but he's got, let's say that the orange and the brown are balls with which he can open up this rack. And from there on, no matter what happens to the balls he hits after this brown seven, he can always shoot the orange five into the side pocket or into the corner pocket nearest us. Um, so that's a better way of playing it. Good opening, I believe. How is he gonna? I believe the stripe ball to which he's nearest, or that he's lined up to the left side pocket with that could be a 15th ball break shot, a ball to leave. Yeah, hard to say exactly what he's gonna do here. 
And speaking of achievements, um, Nick Vandenberg, one of the most famous European pool players as well. All right, as Ralph just dispatched the break ball, I was suggesting he'd leave. So he's not going to leave any of the classic break shots, as we'll, we'll come back to Nick Vandenberg's achievement. He may yet push one of the balls out of the rack into a classic break shot position. sure which break shot he's gonna leave all right Nick Vandenberg is currently 41 years old was be was born in the year 1980 and, um, well Nick is most famous for winning and being a very important player on the European Moscone Cup team. He was among the famous Europeans that started to claw their way back and brought back the, the Moscone Cup, the Moscone Cup Cup trophy, um, when America was almost winning it every year without any problems. Nick and a few of his colleagues, among which Ralph Suke then, um, broke that spell and that's when the Europeans started dominating the Moscone Cup Let's say the equivalent of uh, golf's Ryder Cup where the European square European top five team squares off against the top five Euro American players this year being played in Las Vegas be a trip I'd suggest you take um, being played at Bali's Casino and Resort in Las Vegas at the end of November. A few tickets still available for that. That's an amazing pool show if, you, uh, if you're in that neighborhood or if you fancy going there to support either the European or American team or both if you're from Asia, let's say. So Ralph here is almost, it would tell me that the Left stripe is already in a break shot position. It's hard to see. I wish the camera was on the other side. We would have a clearer view of the rack that they're trying to navigate. Still thinking, so it's not all plain sailing. Where's the black a break shot as well? Maybe the black is just out of the racking zone. So I might want to roll this in very softly and shoot the last stripe in the bottom left pocket near us. Mm -hmm. I believe so. And I think he left himself that tiny perfect angle through which potting this ball and following it through is going to leave him that 30 degree angle on the black ball again, which makes it very potable, but also makes his cue ball Still very maneuverable. Oh, ah, okay, so this is another thing he can do. He pushed out the 15 ball in the very last shot. And if you leave your cue ball in the racking zone after you make the 14th, you can put the cue ball anywhere in the kitchen, as we call it, the lower half of the south side of the pool table. So anywhere in the zone between the first two diamonds looking from the bottom left corner pocket. All right, so Ralph off to a really good first part of this match. No misses yet. Does he have any misses? No. Um, oh, he's got that scratch, of course. Yeah. So he hasn't missed the pot yet. Did make one mistake. Therefore, he's not on 42 balls, which he would be on if he'd made all the balls. So 14 times 3. But with that scratch, he's now leading 41. And with this break ball he just made... 42-0, so almost halfway in winning this match. This match is a um, for placement into the last 64, I believe. So it's the second winner's round. And um, right, so we're looking. 
quickly at A. Is there a break shot we can leave already? Not really ideal. So we're looking for balls that are just left or just to the right of the breaking of the racking zone. Six ball is a little bit too high, I think. Could theoretically be a break shot. Oh, as Ralph misses his shot there. All right. Nick at the table. Ralph disappointed. Well. Either player quite capable of running a hundred balls. Right, so Nick breaking open a few balls, but actually creating two new clusters, as you can see on the right side of the screen. Hmm, so needs to find a way to open up those two clusters on the right. Um First needs to get back into, uh, let's say, short position. So after this green six, would hope to be closer to his next pot at a better angle. All right, so he pushed his brown 15 into a break ball position, but it's the only ball he can pot now. So that's going, going, gone. Can, can roll his cue ball punch it to the left or punch the 15 in and go into the yellow nine ball should have a shot on the orange five hmm. still needs to find a way to open up both clusters and probably needs two balls to be able to achieve that it's not like one good shot is going to open up both clusters so oh, he's leaving him Letting another player go first, I was like, what is he choking ages for? It's like he got all philosophical and started thinking about things. So, top right to open up the green pink cluster. Zip. Oh, I think he. Wow, he did. Was able to touch both clusters. Did he make that a combination? The married balls furthest away from us. I think so. Now he's looking if he can make the two in the pocket near us. us. Needs a very short stroke for that. And he still needs to figure out a break shot as well, because those three balls he's looking at now are all in the breaking zone, or the racking zone, sorry. And, um, that was a pretty good result in one shot to potentially open both clusters. Right. Uh, Nick is a very avid straight pool player or a fan of straight pool. I don't know what his high run is. I don't actually know what either player's high run is, but I would venture to say that Nick's high run is anywhere in between two and three hundred, and so would Ralph's be. Now, for those of you pool fans or new pool fans recently a new straight pool world record high run was made we used to have a, a record by a very famous pool player called Willie Mosconer Willie Mosconi after which the Mosconi Cup is named he once made a run of <laughs> now I'm trying to think back of the correct number what was it again? somewhere in the in the 550 region then about two years ago we had an American player an avid straight pool fan called John Schmidt who was going to attempt to break the high run record and it took him well a lot of practice first of all but he had like a, a week long of attempts and eventually he broke the record which was an incredible achievement and put the new record at 626 balls potted in a row without missing. So making 14 balls, leaving a break shot, making the 15th ball, opening the rack. Wow, incredible achievement. 
now in the last year, since a year or so ago, a gentleman in the Virginia area wanted professional players to be able to attempt to break this record again. So he made excellent conditions for pro players to come by, stay over and give it like well, as long as they wanted, but let's say a weekend or a week long of str pure straight pull attempts trying to break the high run. Um, a few players came and went, and nobody broke the record, until a few months ago, Jason Shaw stepped up, and it's a stuff of legend really, that he had multiple attempts um, over a three, four day period, made numerous high, incredibly high runs of like two, three, four hundred even, then was on the way home and spoke to his wife, Ara Shaw, and through some discussion, probably Jason said, well, I really feel really good about this, but I just couldn't do it. And his wife suggested, why don't you go back and try some more? And so he did. And so Jason Shaw started his latest high run attempt at like, what was it? Well, he started his last session of attempts at like 10 in the evening. And then around 6 o'clock in the morning or 8 a.m. in the morning, he was at a very high run. And, uh, well, long story short, Jason Shaw is now the new straight pool high record, high run record holder with a run of 714 balls. It's an incredible feat. And one of the well, I think the record won't be broken, nor by himself, nor by any other player. Of course, that's what you think more often with sporting records. But I think this one will stand for a long time. So, back to the game at hand. Hmm. little anecdote there for you. So Nick is going to leave the pink as his break shot opportunity. I think yeah, he wants to draw the cue ball back to the top short rail. And leave himself kind of like a 30, 40 degree angle like that. To make the ball and go directly into the bottom side of the breaking of the rack. All right, so good tempo screw back. All right, so Nick Vandenberg on the board. Still trailing by well, at least like 30 points. So. So you want to shoot this shot either with a lot of right spin. So hitting the, of course, making the ball and then hitting the corner ball, maybe half ball, coming into the right long rail and then spinning towards the middle of the table. Well, he definitely hit it. He did exactly what I suggested he do, but he did it about twice, hit it twice as hard as I thought he would. Bringing his cue ball pretty far down, so he's missed two long pots already. The first, his two, first two opportunities in this match were distances like these, failed to make these, so, but he's now Got a few pots under his belt, so let's see if he can make probably the red three to keep his run going. Okay, he's going for the six, green six. So, player is always happy when you're faced with a long shot and having to bring yourself back into prime position. If you then make that long pot, well, in any rotation game, that would be an average pot, but like straight pool, or if you've been playing one pocket for a few days, then, then those long shots are just that bit more difficult. So, he's going to cut the brown 7 in and try to spin his cue ball with right spin in between the orange 5 and red 11. Try to 
open up all problems. Oh, don't get stuck against the blue two. He was aiming to keep position on the orange five. Thought he would, but the cue ball kind of spun and spun. Wow. He's got nothing. That is tough to take. So, well, the safety. I don't think he can try to kick at anything. He's trying to leave his cue ball where he's pointing now to... Yeah. Not leaving anything easy, but he will definitely leave something. Let's nice, get tempo on his cue ball. Make the cue ball hit a rail, but really not come off of the rail any further which would give Ralph more easy options or just able to also play screw back safeties and now he's not able to do that I believe and so what is Ralph going to do I thought we would fast forward throughout this segment maybe someone's taking a timeout I'm not sure Oh, they're just correcting the score, as I could just see the number from Nick Vandenberg. Score flip from 11 to 13, I believe. So, Ralph checking if he can make the green stripe in the bottom right corner pocket. Could also shoot the red stripe, kind of almost the same angle, but the green 14 stripe ball a little bit more straightforward for this angle to contend with. If he makes it, he would then open up that black-orange cluster. Ooh, just went in. All right, in is in. So, now as a player like him or any aspiring players that would love to try their hand at straight pool or like to get their high run into a higher echelon, what is his break shot? What is his 15th ball? You should check right now. I mean, the 9 ball could be a good break shot if his cue ball was the red 3, let's say, in that position for a break shot. Pink four is a bit too low, but he's going to get rid of that now anyway. He's going to screw into the blue two, I believe, and he might bump out. Yeah, the 15 now is in a much better breaking position. Right, so in prime position here, a little thing to deal with is the yellow and red stripe balls. because they want to go into the same pocket logically so we need to get the yellow out of the way in order to make the red stripe in that same pocket so he's looking to leave the brown 15 last According to plan. In straight pull, you A would like to determine what your break shot would be, B you would like to determine what your ball, your 14th ball is going to be to get towards that final break ball shot. Thirdly, you'd like to break open any clusters as soon as you can. And fourthly, you'd like to get rid of 
you know, more difficult balls, you would consider more difficult balls on the table as soon as you can. I mean, don't go out of your way to to get that done. But, you know, I would say, let's say the orange 13, since it's a little bit more along the long rail. You know, try to get rid of those first. Keep the yellow one ball as kind of like a correctional shot should you run out of perfect line somewhere you can use that one potentially to get back in line okay he's going to pick that up now so so the, for the last three pots after this one he will work from one side of the table in general you'd like from to work from side to side of the table you wouldn't like to go from north to south part of the table constantly whether it's playing eight ball or playing straight pool of course in the rotation games you may be very well forced to. So, I mean, he may still leave the yellow nine ball as a break shot. Because then the, f the brown 15 would be a good 14th ball. I believe he'll do that. I think he will screw the cue ball back to where he's lining up now. To then be able to pot the 15 and stun his cue ball to leave it somewhere stuck on the left long rail. And Ralph Suke showing us he's still got it. Playing in the famous color colors of his country. The black, yellow and red. Deutschland written on the back of his shirt. Very smooth shot there, perfect angle again, let's say a 30 degree angle. Ralph not happy with Nick's racking of the ball, so re-racked him to make him a little bit more tight. Would like to probably hit the green six, but get his cue ball out of the way. Now he's a little bit fortunate there that he hit the second ball. Because of the speed he hit it at, he curved the cue ball and the cue ball didn't naturally travel into the green six, the lowest ball, the corner ball of the rack, but curved it a little bit higher. And he was lucky that that ball kind of popped out, the ball he hit, and became a saving grace. Right, this is a very good break here, you know, popping out eight to ten balls or something, leaving four or five in a cluster. is a very normal but very good breaking result in straight pool. Again, which balls can we spot as a breaking shot? The green stripe, the blue two, could potentially be breaking shots. Not necessarily worried about yet, but the 14th ball would be the penultimate ball to play position onto the break shot. Could be even be the pink here in the middle of the table, that would be ideal. Because if you leave yourself straight in on that pink as the last pot of that rack, then you could stop it right there and you would have that 30 degree angle on your break ball again. All right, so Ralph, a bit of work to do. He's got two clusters he needs to open up. So could potentially play this green stripe and then follow his cue ball into the red three. The red three might thereafter hit the blue two and bump it out a little bit more into an perhaps even more ideal breaking position. Now he's hitting the cue ball low, so I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. So still needs to open up that cluster of two, three balls. Could do it with the green six, but of course he would need to come onto the left side of the table. And there's not really a natural shot yet available for, to do that. I mean, he could play this pink stripe and spin it in with left spin and play position onto the green ball in the same pocket. He might do that. Come around two, three rails. Zip, zip. Now leave himself an angle. And that is very straight. If he wanted to break this open now, the two balls next to the green he would have to thump it into the top rail and come out straight but then he doesn't have a 
Okay, he's not. He didn't go for that because that was too dangerous. If you hit those two, you might not have a, a next ball. So leaving it a bit later than you would ideally like to do. You know, you would like to get rid of your clusters, as I said, as soon as you can. So you leave like six, seven, eight balls in the open to be able to run out. Now he still needs a very specific position to break open at least that one remaining cluster furthest north from our view. Could run into him now, but it's also very dangerous. Okay, so how are you going to do this? So I can only shoot the yellow or the black. I think neither offers position to break open the cluster. Um, does the brown 15 stripe ball just behind the red 3, does that, does that lose? Okay, he's looking at the red 3. That does go into the top right corner pocket. So at the moment he would like to leave the blue ball as a break shot. Alright, so he's going to try to get that angle that he kind of was looking at on the red 3 by rolling in the pink 4. Doesn't want much of an angle. Okay, so he's gonna not do that. By hitting the three, he might not break an open. Anything else? Okay, so he's gonna make the red three, or not even make the red three, but now roll the yellow one in to keep position on the brown stripe, and then he would, of course, open up the cluster. So he's definitely out here. Ooh. Yes, he will be. But he hasn't left himself one of the classic break balls. So yeah, he's looking at leaving the blue stripe and leaving his cue ball in that line where he was just pointing. Which is very doable. But not ideal, hitting the back of the pack. Since you're... Well, we will talk about the break shot later. So how can you now get rid of these last four remaining balls? And okay, so I think he had one last try to leave himself a tiny bit of a left angle on the blue 10 to be able to bump the 5 into a classic break shot position. But I think he's too straight on the 5. Or can he punch his cue ball just that bit into the orange 5? Let's see. The red ball's blocking maybe a small percentage of the the right top corner pocket. Definitely has to play the blue ball now, so orange ball is laying in the rack so he might actually be leaving himself the pink as a break shot hmm. okay so now has to come let's say to the south side of the table our side of the table okay wasn't even going to entertain that so now he's got it by leaving his cue ball in the breaking zone or the rack zone he can put it anywhere at the bottom half of the south side of the table. So, being able to... Oh, you never want to hit the side of the rack. I mean, there's so many options to go in off. But wasn't able to screw his cue ball back enough. But that was a result, really. So those break shots, you would 
you know, I think beginning straight pool players often leave themselves these side pocket break shots that Ralph just had because your cue ball at that angle has a lot of speed going into the rack. Oh, a bit of a straight position from Ralph, leaving him not so very maneuverable cue ball. So I might have to play this with rail first and some right spin. Uh, in straight pull on your break shots, you would ideally like to position the break ball as such that your cue ball hits either four of the corner balls of the rack, because then it can pop out into the openness of the table. If you hit anywhere on the side of the rack, your cue ball might get stuck or it might go in off. So that's what players try to avoid, even though sometimes your break shot, you're kind of slave to where your cue ball is going to go into the pack. And you have to uh, maneuver your cue ball with more backspin, more topspin, more speed to try to not get stuck or go in off. Alright. So. Only a few more open balls remaining, so. Would probably screw his cue ball back to where it is now off of the red ball. And play the green six after this and smack his cue ball into the rack. So, leaving himself as much angle as he can because with this green six, not leaving much angle, you need to really thump your cue ball in, into the green. And with, let's say, center ball, to get a little bit of cue ball movement. If he would have had the cue ball, let's say, a ball's width to the right from where it is now, it would be easier to do. A little speed on the stroke. That's pretty good, breaking out one or two balls, and that blue or black can now form a ball with which he can open the rest of the cluster. So, pretty good result. But still, no break shot possibility as yet. A few clusters, and all of that in the last, you know, the last eight balls of the rack is not ideal. But Ralph by now, as you can see, taking a 69 to 13 point lead in a race to 100. Even though he knows and will have many times been in the situation where he was in a lead like this, missed and his opponent can run out the whole set or the whole match. And he's done it to many players before as well. So he's aware of the dangers. He's, a, I mean, probably the most seasoned pool player in the world ever tournament play anyway all right opted to go into him now left himself the browns so that's a pretty good result and the yellow one ball can be an ideal break shot no clusters anymore because the red and the yellow in the middle of the breaking zone or the racking zone I keep saying the breaking zone um, have pockets available Wants to pick up the brown strike ball near us soon or leave it as a penultimate, as a 14th pot. Now, you can see that Ralph is playing with a glove. Now, he's only started doing this in the last few months. And it's quite uh, noticeable, really, because Ralph is only, was always the person never use the glove in whatever the, the weather was let's say if you're playing in more in places with high humidity in Asia and in the middle of summer in America or places where there's not such good air conditioning then a glove can kind of give you more of a smooth stroke you can also use talcum powder, powder baby powder is what I always used but then sometimes you start to, when you start to use that, you can't really stop and you almost need it for every shot. Or it's what you think, anyway. Anyway, back to the rack at hand. It's gonna stun in the green 14. Or maybe not, actually. Play, play the red inside, it's even better. Uh, 
He's looking if he can stop his cue ball after making the three and then make the green stripe into the side. Not to snooker himself against the yellow ball. Yeah, just able to. All right, so Ralph in, in good control here, solved some good puzzles, albeit in the latter parts of these racks, so maybe left himself more work to do than he would have liked in the last five, six balls, but has solved what he's faced with, or what he's made him face himself pretty nicely. And carved out himself carved out a nice lead for himself now he's gonna play position on this brown 15 will probably pop his cue ball into the right top corner two, rail, two rails so looking at the line he wishes to have on the brown ball could leave himself straight on the brown and stop his cue ball somewhere there for a nice break shot on the solid yellow ball but this is even better still an easy pot can now bring it, stun his cue ball towards the left side pocket and out of the rail one revolution or so. So about two or three balls width off of the left rail, leaving himself that typical 20, 30 degree angle on his break shots. And that's the 20, 30 degree positional play is kind of very relevant for all rotation games, all eight ball games. Leaving an, a doable pot and making leaving your cue ball easily maneuverable. All right, so it's probably gonna hit, I would say the pink, even though you might think it's gonna hit the black in the pack. See, oh, missed the break shot. Not missed the break shot, but missed the break shot. Nick will be chuffed because Ralph only would have needed this rack and a few more balls to close out the match. Right. Well, Nick kind of knows what he has to do. Can't really l let Ralph back to the table, not with an open shot anyway. So the... Uh, the mission is fairly clear. Of course, the execution is remains to be seen but it's, in a way he's under the gun knows what he has to do and I think he will uh, perform well from here on in because of the winner that he is and the talented player that he is in, in free play in challenge match situations but also in tournament situations he's proven to be a killer and one of the legendary European pool players ever to pick up a cue. So, not by his doing, but as you can see, no clusters to speak of, or no clusters. The brown seven is a break shot, the red three is a break shot, the nine ball yellow stripe is a break shot. So look out for those three, or one of those three to be left last. Only needs to kind of solve the pink-black ball. Not really conundrum, but would need to make the black first. He would maybe like to do that now, although he won't be able to. To then be able to make the pink. Okay, he's going to make the brown seven, so... Never mind being that... That being a break shot. So I think he's going to leave the red three... I would, in this situation, kind of like to pick up, after the black, would like to pick up the pink stripe and the yellow one ball fairly soon, since those are kind of the most difficult balls on the table. I mean, don't consider them difficult, but just balls you want to pick up sooner rather than later. Probably not leave them last, even though you could do that as well.
nice that Nick came to the table with a fairly open table. And so I was able to get into a rhythm here without having to perform heroics or long pots or having to go beat Ralph in a safety battle to try to give himself a chance. The chance was given and he's duly taking it at the moment. So he probably doesn't want to leave the nine ball as a penultimate ball before he leaves the three. Or he, he might leave the yellow nine actually as a break shot. Options in this instance. Yeah, there goes the red three. Okay, so the balls I spoke of on the right side of the table that he or that I would pick up fairly soonish, he's gonna leave lastly. That's all very okay. Especially if you're talented like he is. Alright, could still play either one of these two balls. Probably is able to make a stop shot on the one ball and play a stop shot on the pink stripe. Although he might decide to do otherwise. And bring his cue ball a bit closer to the one ball. Leave himself an angle to work with. And that is no angle to work with. And it's too straight, I think, to be able to punch it into the right long rail and out again. So he might just screw it back and leave himself in that line. See, even the speed he potted that ball at, but he still punched it out a little bit, so pretty good result, but more of an angle than he wanted. Okay, so his cue ball is uncontrollable. It's just gonna if you have if you're faced with a more than 45 degree angle on your pot. It's hard to deter or it's hard to steer your cue ball, it's just gonna react in a 90 degree angle from the potting angle you're faced with so let's say he made well we'll talk about that later <laughs> it's a bit difficult to explain right so if he's got a shot on this ball i mean it doesn't look like he has to curve it although he was kind of visualizing it with a bit of elevation yes he many many curve nice so Nick is very good at these small nifty shots where he needs his cue ball to bend like a few degrees I think he would be if he would practice it more and more he would be could be one of the most deadly one pocket players in the world really although one pocket is not really being played on the world stage or not in a televised televised stage anyway Right, so typical straight pool rack, two or three clusters remain. Could leave the green six, but he could also use that now to break open the blue pink and maybe some more balls and a new break shot might pop out. So the green is currently a break shot, the yellow one, the red three as well, but I think things will change. The, the layout will still change in him having to maneuver the cue ball to break open a few clusters. So. Shooting the six, trying to stun his cue ball into the pink and stop it somewhere over there. Nice, good hit, but did the two brown balls act nicely and form an inline combination? I think they did. I mean, of course, he would still have the green 14 into the side or the red into the side or corner. I'm not sure. I mean, if they would be a combination, I think he would have played it by now. Still has to probably open up the orange and blue stripe. Pink is a good break shot. Blue does go into the left side pocket, but only if he brings his cue ball to where the orange five ball is now. So, work to be done. Let's see how he solves this puzzle. Right, a lot of travel here. To just to try open try to open up those two stripes I was I mentioned twenty seconds ago. 
they only did that because it was a natural, normal, logical line after making the red three. His cue ball was always going to come into the short rail closer to us and come back straight out. So he didn't really have to do anything and he would have had the one ball. Maybe the two brown balls combination. You would imagine he, it's they form a combination or else he would need to have a ball to break those open. the blue 10 stripe a little bit too high and therefore his cue ball drifted I mean, you don't want to play this pink blue combination into the side that side pocket is small from coming from where the blue is but he's gonna try it yeah i don't know if that's the correct shot hmm. anyway it's hard to uh argue with a, a legend like Nick so Ralph with a chance to at least get to about the 90 mark after this rack and then needing only like 11 more balls to win this match I think he's taking a timeout or actually correcting the score so Nick on 35 now Be nice if we had like a little camera that with which we could walk around the table 360 to just kind of look at certain angles or certain combinations like the two brown balls if they're actually on or not now we will only find out when they either open them up or make the combination so i think the pink is out of the racking zone and so is a nice break shot well it's opting to go for the most difficult pot currently available on the table Okay, so he, I don't think the combination is on and wants to leave himself an angle on the blue stripe to punch his cue ball to the right of that blue stripe into the brown stripe. He will always have a shot on the orange stripe ball no matter what happens. So that's the way to go into clusters if you know you, you've got a shot on another ball after you hit the cluster. Pop. That's all you need. Okay, so... Ideally placed these last three balls to be cleared up and then get himself a nice workable angle on the pink four as a break shot. So a race to 100 this match to get amongst the best 64 straight pool players in, of Europe in these 2022 European Championships. The first European Championships kind of after the pandemic, or I guess we're, we're living through, we're living with the pandemic, at, I guess, at the moment. Ooh, that is not good enough of an angle. In fact, that's no angle. And it's almost like the cue ball didn't had a slower reaction off that top rail than it would have had off of some other rails. So Ralph, for the third time, not happy with the way Nick racked the balls. That would mean that he thinks they're not tight enough. And if they're not tight enough, then they break open in a worse way. So 
I think he can just make this ball, but he has top spin his Q1 with top left spin. Out of the corner, he's making the ball in and break open the rack. Ooh. I mean, that's a result, really, to get one ball, but only then has the yellow nine ball to play position on. Yeah, if he leaves his white ball there, then that would be an ideal position on the yellow nine ball. But I don't think he can get there. Well, he's got a little bit of an angle. He's got a little bit of an angle on the green six. Uh, that wasn't me just now making that weird sound. That's my uh, friendly feline housemate my cat Dora I shouldn't say her name really because she's about to react some more and uh, she's joining me for this straight pool commentary match she can be quite talkative but usually only when she gets hungry so so I'm commentating on this match from my home in London England so now Ralph did get a shot on the nine ball into the side but hasn't left himself a lot or any kind of angle to go into the red stripe or the other balls of that rack no matter how hard he punches this I believe I mean he might be able to punch it to the left from where he's looking but not at any such speed that would develop a ball so up to play safe and it's always the safety aspect of straight pool is quite interesting. There are quite a few repeat safeties, quite a few zones where you would like your cue ball to be in. Let's say a good zone, not that he's probably able to get there now, is the middle part of the top rail. If you can imagine that, if your cue ball is stuck on the middle part of the top rail. And it's hard for opponents to hit a ball and bring it back towards that top rail in any kind of way. So Nick is going to try to bring the cue ball close to us without pushing a cue a ball out of the rack. That's a good result there. Not giving up any theoretical pot unless there is some kind of combination possible. And that might be possible. Let's see, you know, the I don't think it is, but the one ball that's just behind the black eight ball could be of course can be hit with the red 11 black eight okay ralph is not entertaining that possibility so he's gonna i think play safe try to get his cue ball back to where he had it before i mean he hit it nice and thin and would have expected almost to not be able to hit it so thin that his cue ball would go into the corner pocket. But as things stand, he did. Now Nick has missed two long distance shots in the beginning of this match. Made one. Let's see what he, how he does on this one. Nice. Good pot. Released a few balls. So we'll eventually probably use the pink stripe where he's pointing now, leave his cue ball in that line to be able to roll the pink stripe in and then force his cue ball with a lot of top spin through that rack. Mind you, he would love to do that now and leave the one ball, but of course he doesn't have the preferred angle. So he's gonna go into this rack without a safety ball available, let's say. So he, he's hoping to create either one of the balls he's rummaging through now or leave the yellow stripe inside that's far from certain maybe leave the blue too kaboom see and this is what you get playing straight pool if you don't leave yourself safety balls and you're reliant on needing a ball from the cluster to play position on that's tough going you can't really keep living or running out like that But he can shoot either of the he can shoot either of the blue balls, I believe. If he would shoot the 
the solid two, then he would need kind of like an elevating rest. I think he can shoot the blue stripe. easier fashion so it's just okay you can definitely do that he's just looking what he can do afterwards it's hard to see the exact angle he has from where we're sitting All right, a little short stroke leaving himself the other blue so still three or four balls in a cluster that need moving whether it sometimes only has to be an inch or two sometimes a bit further Okay, it's a combination, so it, that's nice. So actually, this rack is now totally open. And I think he wants to leave the orange 13 stripe ball as his break shot. So Nick, again, his brief is clear. He needs to run out 65 balls from here. Can't let Ralph back to the table realistically and expect to get away with it unless he plays a, a deadly safety and lets Ralph back to the table so mission statement run out and that would be no mean feat um, Nick Vandenberg making a tournament comeback after a few years out of the professional scene Remains to be seen if he's making his comeback solely at these European Championships or is he going to make his way back onto the world stage? I mean, I hope so because I really like to see him play. I like his stroke. I like his game intelligence. Um, I would personally love to see him play a little bit more trusting on his talents. Um, the latter five to ten years of his career became a fairly slow player. Um, and quite uh, well there would be said a bit of an anxious type of player uh, if you're listening to dick to this <laughs> to this nick you know what i think of your game and uh, let your talent shine you know what i'm saying that's what we've agreed on uh, both that is a, a good mantra all right so nick I believe we'll leave the red 13 last. Might leave the green stripe last. It's probably going to shoot the nine ball after this red ball. Yeah, so make the yellow stripe drift over naturally from the left side of the long rail to the right long rail and leave himself a little bit low or straight in on the green stripe so he wants to bring his cue ball back just north of the right side pocket let's say towards that diamond or a little bit further up even middle of the top half of the right long rail Okay, what do I know? Changing plans. So maybe the 14, the green 14 is still a break shot as well. All right. Well, the yellow could be potentially as well. So he left himself three break shots. So again, wants to leave himself not straight on the break shot, but with about a 30 to 40 degree angle. So about to where it is now or a little bit further back. He's got a small area to play with. This is where he's a, a very talented player, able to maneuver his cue ball at very close quarters, at very f distances that require a lot of finesse and stroke definition, where you really are able to guide your cue ball to the millimeter perfection. Boom. So, hit the ideal part of the rack, so the corner ball of the rack top corner ball meaning that his cue ball was never gonna or a very small chance to get stuck on the rack all right so he's, he's got a workable rack 
few clusters remain and like five six balls in the open let's see okay let's not talk about a break shot yet because there isn't really any but i'm pretty positive he will create one by opening the clusters that remain i think he's determined that the combination will work with a red blue stripe combination so we can somehow make the potting angle happen because they're at so close quarters to each other now he has to find ways or balls to open up the clusters sooner rather than later was no problem now he needs to get to to work and breaking open these clusters in the middle of the rack there and he could stop his cue ball and leave a bit of an angle on the nine ball make the yellow in the pocket near us that's a bit difficult and requires too much of potting accuracy really at high speed What do you think, audience? Isn't it nice that playing 8-ball, playing straight pool, games like one pocket, that you don't know what the players are going to do half of the time. You kind of there, there are options on the table available, and you might know what the players are going to do, but it might still be a surprise. So that's what I really like about commentating on 8-ball, straight pool matches. There are various ways to skin a cat so to say who would skin a cat and um, so he can use the cut in the five orange five or he's going to play the red ball at least open up parts of his problems all right the black goes if the black goes i'm not sure if the black is removed if the brown ball then goes into the top right corner the orange five is blocking some parts of it and is not able to get rid of it now because he's bridging over the pink but he's in an excellent position to get back to about a 90 to 60 score if he clears this rack. rooting for kind of like a close ending to this game I would love to have like a 1990 score in a race to 100 I mean I always like a final rack decider who doesn't and players are know that any last or any mistake can kill off their chances of winning a match and here both players know they need to win about four or five more matches to get into medal contention at the European Straight Pool Championships. Okay, so he's gonna run into the orange stripe. Maybe hit the brown ball as well. We'll always have the blue ball to shoot at. What do I know? goes okay either way he's played 
a very good tempo sh position here because he's able to either shoot this in nice okay so the yellow is the brake shot that's been the case for quite a while he's got a bit more of an angle on the brown that he would like so his cue ball is probably gonna he's probably going to yeah, I'm not sure I think he can bump it into the pink ball and stop it somewhere over there to shoot the blue two after this brown seven Either way, you should find a way to clear out this rack. That's a pretty good shot. Needs a touch of left spin on his cue ball to make his cue ball turn left coming off of that. It's gonna, go, it's gonna roll straight into the top rail. But he wants to come back in between the pink and yellow towards the middle of the table or somewhere thereabouts. Leave himself straight on the pink, a workable angle. That is very nice, nice and close position, perfect position rather. So, again, would love to have position there where he just pointed his stick. Unscrewing these balls back about 10, 20 centimeters is, is a good practice as well for any practicing pool players. Nice, good shot. All right. So 90 to 61, our current score, score in favor of Ralph de Kaiser Suke. Nick with a perfect break shot angle. He will need to maneuver his cue ball out. I think he will shoot this with a bit more draw because he's going to hit the low side of the green stripe ball and needs to draw his cue ball out. Yeah, careful. All right, that should be okay. The pink red stripe should form a combination. That shouldn't be too difficult. And thereafter, not really any clusters to speak of, are there? Are there? Okay, so calling the red stripe furthest away from us. He's gonna play rail first. Ooh, just trickled in. Okay. sure if he's got the desired position on the pink stripe I don't think he did looking at the way he kind of flicked his hand in chalk so correction shot needed on the orange stripe I think he would really love to shoot the pink stripe but this should prove no stumbling block for a player like Nick. But again, having played straight pool, these are kind of like the most difficult shots you're faced with. So he's a bit yet to settle himself or yet to truly focus and knows that this shot, after this shot, he will be back in line for the rest of this rack and possibly to run out this match. Now, looking at our break shot potentials, we have the green stripe. That could be a break shot. He could still roll this blue stripe in and then make the orange ball and let his cue ball travel into the black 8, brown 15 and push them in just out of the racking zone into break ball positions. Let's see how he plays this. For the rest, it's all open, so a matter of focus, keeping your stroke loose. Having a nice and clear plan though, don't just go, oh, I'll just play it somewhere in that zone. And then you usually end up right in, in between positions on two balls. little bump there with that left spin coming off of the top rail this rack is as, about as open as it could be I mean the black still needs the blue ball removed to be able to be played in the top right corner pocket all 
right, so he wants to play position from pink to pink. And kind of, I think he was looking at stunning his cue ball full into the orange ball to make the orange ball bump the other balls out of the racking zone, like so. The black is now an even better break shot, but now the orange-brown stripe has become a cluster that needs attention. Yeah, it's a beautiful game though. I hope you agree with me and I hope you're enjoying this match. If you're looking for more world-class pool videos, have a little scroll through the Billiard Network YouTube library and see what we have for you. We have matches of all pool disciplines between all of the best players in the world. Ooh, careful Nick. Okay, he's got a shot on the green stripe but still needs to open up that cluster and doesn't have an angle yet to do so. Please also, if you would, press that little like button at the bottom of your screen. We would really appreciate it. And we would like you to subscribe to our Billiard Network channel as well. And that would ensure you get our newest videos and our also our classic pool videos as a recommendation in your YouTube suggestions. If you'd like to let anybody know about the Billiard Network and the great work we do, you can also go stand on your balcony right now and do a little bit of a Billiard Network promotion from that end. We hope you're enjoying this match. I certainly am. Not least of all because it's, it's one of my fellow countrymen and old pool friends, Nick Vandenberg, playing this match. But it's just because it's a good match. They both play the games, whatever discipline they attempt, very well. In a very professional, fair manner. This cluster needs opening. Okay, I think he's going to do with the black eight, of course. I think that would have been his preferred break shot. Now, opening up this cluster would leave position on the blue two in the side, at least. Or he can play the orange five he broke open. All right, so doing a little pointing, thinking, planning. We're fast forwarding through the thinking phases of this game. I think he's pointed at about all balls on the table by now and all potential angles. So I think the red three is going to be left. Okay, I wanted this cue ball to roll back a ball's width further for a position on the brown seven. So bit of an adjustment needed here but I think he can play yeah so he's just checking the red three ball is a pretty in a pretty low position meaning that he doesn't want to let's say he leaves this this three ball lastly with the cue ball as now he doesn't want to pop the three and then miss the whole rack of course that would mean end of end of his run out so He's just making sure that he can leave that ball and then still go into the rack when he leaves himself a nice angle. I think he'll just be able to... We'll find out in a little bit. So... Either wants to leave himself straight on the brown or with a workable 20-30 degree angle either left or right side of that 7 be able to work himself into an even better position for his break shot. So, 14 balls a rack. Don't leave yourself too much of an angle, Nick, which he did, I think. Cardinal sin. So, is he able to pop this seven and still hold an angle? I don't think he is. He might have to stun it over or spin it out of the top left corner two rails. So much more speed required looking at his pre-strokes. It doesn't look like he's going to soft spin this. Or he might actually. He's the kind of player that can. No. Speed. Coming out. Beautiful correction. All right. So. Nick on a current score 75. 25 required for the win. Ralph only 10 away. 
what a close match this is european straight pool championships 2022 i'm liking this action so he wants to hit the corner ball of the rack and get a shot still who almost kicked his cue ball into the corner but that was a pretty good break shot play there again as i said previously you would like to hit either the top two balls of the rack or the lower two balls of the rack for your cue ball not to get stuck into the rack when you break the balls open and that's what he duly showed us there and a pretty good spread so if he could make any ball now and get back in line it's a pretty typical straight pool rack again with about eight balls open one or two clusters to take care of nothing out of the ordinary really all right so the six ball looking from how nick is playing it doesn't have the whole pocket available so it needs to be steered to the right a little bit yeah okay good back in line now he's got position an angle on the blue stripe to thump that in stun his cue ball into the remaining clusters opening up a few hopefully not creating different ones nice good result meaning all balls are open just in that one shot see and this is a typical example of solving your problems in the first five balls of your 14 ball rack run let's say so now we can just determine what's my break shot going to be and how do i get there rather than still having to tend to clusters Very good little straight pull run this is from Nick. The highest break of the match so far. Ralph got to his 90 points by uh, a few breaks of 30, around 30, I believe. Um, Nick should have about a break of 40 by now. Sorry, I didn't really keep count. And I don't really have a notepad near me either to, to score the racks he's been running since the score is displayed right at the bottom left of your screen there's no need for that is there so i think the brown stripe will be the break shot he's got options for his penultimate ball on the table i would usually love to clear the pink ball on the left rail because that's the most difficult ball that remains of course, unless you get straight in on it then it's nice and straightforward literally and figuratively let's just enjoy Nick and his pattern play here to make this red stripe and then float the cue ball over to come sh fairly straight in on the last pink stripe ball okay scratch that that's not what he's doing of course it wasn't we might leave those two stripe balls for last to be able to play a good position on his break shot from i think that's what he'll do Right, so Nick definitely not slowing down. He's on a nice run, and it's true. If you if your racks are open and keep the rhythm going, keep yourself going. They don't think too much, or because too long thinking often doesn't bring positive thoughts. And you get more creative with negative thinking the longer you think. So it almost looks like Nick is kind of playing like a you know practice session straight pool match here where actually he's playing the latter stages of a european championship straight pool tournament against a known killer in ralph Suquet. has been trailing the whole match nick has and with these next two balls could bring himself back onto 89 points to 90 points for ralph all right so 
Nick Vandenberg needs a nice little tempo positional shot to leave himself again a workable 30 degree angle or so pot on the brown 15 beautiful all right so 89 11 balls required so this break shot and then 10 more from the currently racked rack Okay, so playing his cue ball with a tip below center stun. Once the stun is back out into the open, don't go forward really, because that might mean a scratch. That's good enough. What a nice little hit there. And he's opened up, it looks like he's opened up the 10 balls he still requires. All right, so Nick with 11 or 10 balls remaining. To beat his one of his fiercest rivals, Suke, the legend. Well, both legends, really. So, has he got the nine balls that he requires laid out open on the table? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eh, he needs the opening of one cluster at least, I think. Or no. To be able to get his nine required balls. Eight more. Okay, so he's able to stop his cue ball after making the green stripe. And I think he can... Yeah, he can leave a little bit of an angle on the red stripe. And then thump his cue ball into the clusters because... He can safely do that because the yellow one is positioned nice and safely in front of the side pocket. So, eight balls required. Nice minimal angle. And he's looked sharp in this match, I have to say. I mean, of course, he's missed a few long-range shots, but in this, at this time of the match, where it's really close and any mistake means a, would normally mean a loss of game, he's shown a good bottle and puts him in good stead for the rest of the straight pool tournament and the other disciplines here at the European Championships. All right, Ooh. okay, good shot. So he needs to leave five balls, is that it? So he needs five more. Which they're looking pretty clear so far. All right, Nick would be chuffed with this victory if he can get it. Just looking back at the amount of points he still requires, I believe. Just making sure he didn't make a miscalculation. Right, really hoping you're enjoying this straight pull video. If you haven't yet, please show your appreciation by pressing the like button. We would really appreciate that. Uh, if you wish to subscribe, we'd really love you to do that as well. We are bringing you many more amazing high-class world pool videos in the near future so I think two balls remain or is it three I think two if I got my calculations correct so Nick Vandenberg two balls away from a famous victory over Ralph Suke anytime you can beat Ralph Suke no matter what tournament or where is a good day's work I think the ref just indicated last ball. If not, it will be the penultimate ball. For Nick to progress. And Ralph will still have it shot in the loser side of the tournament. Okay, so one ball remains. Right, that's it ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Join us more often, will you? Wow, what a great straight pool match this has been. Thank you for your company. I've really enjoyed watching it. I've enjoyed commentating on it. And uh, go check out some of the other videos in the Billiard Network library. See you later.